Hey, I'm Billy Drain from Miller Industries. Today we have Cummins Engine Company with us, one of our great partners in our business. At Miller Industries, we pride ourselves in our relationships with other, other industry leaders. And today we have with us Jason Lambert and Scott Furr from Cummins. We're gonna to talk to you a little bit about class six air intake systems and the proper maintenance on those on your vehicles. Thank you, Billy. Today, we'd like to talk about proper intake air system maintenance on your class six chassis. Not maintaining the intake air system correctly is one of the most expensive mistakes you can make. We'll be pointing out all of the checkpoints that you should be doing on a routine basis. So the first chassis we're gonna look at today is the International MV with the Cummins L9 engine. We're gonna be looking at the air filter and when to change it. Always reference your maintenance manual for each OEM to know when to change your air filter. Another indicator is your restrictor gauge. On this application that we're looking at, the restrictor gauge is plumbed at the bottom of your air filter housing and runs into the cab of the chassis. First thing we're gonna do in changing the air filter is we're gonna unlatch the latches on each side. Then we'll pull off the air filter cover housing. Set it somewhere where it's clean and out of the way. And then pull out your air filter element. Discard the old air filter element Look into your air filter housing and you'll notice there'll be some debris or dust that may have fallen from your air filter element. You'll want to get that out. The best way to get that out is to take a damp rag. Simply put a little bit of water on a rag, wring out any unnecessary water, and then clean out your air filter housing from any debris that may have fell from the old air filter. After you get it good and clean, Inspect your new air filter to make sure there's no rips or tears in your gasket material. And then simply install your new air filter element and reassemble your top cover for your air filter. At the end, you'll want to reset your restrictor gauge and you simply just press the button to reset it after you change your filter. And that concludes the air filter element changing on the International MV. So the next filter housing we'll be looking at is in the Freightliner M2 Business Class with again, the L9 Cummins engine. Reference your maintenance manual and or your air restrictor indicator to know when you need to properly change your air filter. And if you notice on the air filter housing in this one, the restrictor gauge is on the outside. So the first step you're going to have to do when changing the air filter on this Freightliner is take out your screws. You'll have three screws and you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Unloosen each screw and it may be on there kind of firm. Take out your, filter, your old filter element, discard it. And again, we need to make sure that we use a damp rag to capture any debris that may have fell off your old element. Always wring it out. You don't need a soaked rag. Simply wipe it out. Look inside, make sure you got all the loose debris. Take your new element and again inspect it. Make sure there's no cracks or tears where the ceiling housing is to be. And, and install your new air filter into the air filter housing. Retighten your screws again with a Phillips screwdriver. Another point is to make sure that you use the correct specs from your OEM maintenance manual when tightening your air filter housing screws. At the end, you'll want to reset your restrictor gauge and you simply just press the button to reset it after you change your filter. And that concludes your filter changing on your Freightliner chassis. So now we're going to look at a couple of the Packar chassis, the Kenworth T370 and then the Peterbilt 348 with both having a PX9 engine in them. So now we're gonna look at the Kenworth T370. And one thing you'll notice with the air filter housing on this one is you will have to remove your cab ventilation filter housing. You simply just unlatch it from the bottom, pull it up, and then set it out of your way. Now again, a couple of good points on your air filter housing. Always reference your maintenance manual to make sure that you change your air filter properly the way the OEM wants you to. And always reference your restrictor gauge so in changing your air filter, this is a Donaldson style air filter canister. You'll undo the two thumb screw nut bolts. Simply pull off that front cover. The next step is to pull out your air filter from the air filter housing. It may be a little bit tight. Pull it out, discard it, take a damp cloth, 
and simply wipe out any debris that may have fell from your old air filter into your filter housing. And make sure you clean the clean side of the air filter housing. When you're done with that, inspect your new air filter. Make sure there's no debris, no cuts, no rips, no tears. And then simply slide in your new air filter. Make sure it's in there good. And then reinstall your cover. Tighten your two fasteners. At the end, you'll want to reset your restrictor gauge and you simply just press the button to reset it after you change your filter. So we're gonna reassemble our cab ventilation housing. Latch it at the bottom and that concludes the air filter assembly installation for the Kenworth T370. So now we're going to look at the Peterbilt chassis, the 348, and if you'll notice, the air filter housing is on the opposite side, and we also don't have to take off the cab ventilation housing. Always reference your maintenance manual before changing your air filter on any OEM, and always make sure you check your air restrictor indicator for proper air filter maintenance. The first step you'll want to do is to take off your fasteners off of your cover, Place your cover out of the way. Pull your air filter element out. Maybe a little tricky with some of your wiring. Get you a damp rag. Remember to wring out any excess of water. All we want to do here is clean out any dust or debris that may have fell into the housing from the old filter element. And another note again is to make sure you clean the clean side of your filter before you install your new filter. So clean the whole housing on the inside, but also get the clean side with inside the air filter. The next step is to inspect your new air filter. Make sure there's no tears or rips around the seal and simply install your new air filter housing. Reinstall your cover. Make sure that you reset your air restrictor indicator and that concludes our air filter changing on the Peterbilt 348. Thank you Jason for demonstrating how to change an intake air filter. A couple of other points I'd like to bring up are these. Always make sure that you've installed the proper element for your specific OEM's filter housing. You can reference your OEM service literature. You can also reference your OEM dealer to ensure that you have purchased and have the correct filter element for your vehicle. One of the most expensive things you can do is to install an improper air filter in your vehicle. Doing so may allow unfiltered air to enter the engine, causing reduced engine performance and durability. I'd like to review some other air intake inspection points that must be done on a routine basis. This clamp joint coming out of the air filter housing. Inspect it on a routine basis to ensure that it's torqued to the proper specification according to the OEM's requirements. You've got another clamp joint at the turbocharger intake connection. You want to inspect it on a routine basis to ensure that it is properly torqued. You also want to look at this entire plumbing here. You want to ensure that nothing has rubbed it and that has compromised its integrity. The turbocharger discharge pipe, you want to inspect these clamps as well to ensure that they are torqued properly. You want to inspect the piping to make sure that nothing has rubbed it that would uh, create a hole and create a boost leak at this point in the system. Look at your charge air cooler air intake connection. Check this clamp for proper torque. Reference your OEM service literature for the correct torque value. Now we want to look at the outlet side of the charge air cooler and we want to be sure that we inspect this tank for uh, obvious damage or cracks. We want to check our clamped connections to make sure that they're torqued correctly and inspect this piping system and these flexible hoses for obvious signs of damage. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned a little bit about the air handling system from Cummins. Make sure you subscribe to our news feed to get all the latest tips and tricks from Miller Industries. This video is for product demonstration purposes only and is not intended for training or instructional purposes.
Situations vary and operators should rely on their own professional knowledge and safety procedures when conducting actual recoveries. Miller Industries, the world leader in towing and recovery equipment.